Canadian Ride 705. Today we're talking about camping uh, with the Indian Scout Bobber. So um, now, first of all, if you're on the road and uh, you want to find a spot to stay or whatever, and you're riding the Scout Bobber, um, if you want to plan a long trip, um, even if you want to ride across Canada, uh, it's possible to do it. It's just that you got to keep in mind, uh, you know, you don't really have a lot of storage space and you're not going to be as comfortable as somebody riding a big bagger and bringing a list of 400 different things with them. If, uh, you know, I'm explaining to somebody, you know, how to stay on the road is really all you really need on the road is your debit card or some cash um, because, you know, you're not Les Stroud in the Arctic tundra fighting a grizzly bear for a salmon. You don't necessarily need a survival knife. You really just need a place to, to stay and, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to spend over a hundred bucks to stay in a motel that you showed up to late or whatever. You just want to have the option available to you. Maybe you found a good campground. Um, you know, Canada's awesome. Uh, if you're riding through Ontario, Algonquin Park has tons of campgrounds. You can pretty much just pull in any time of year and uh, get a spot for, for a tent. Um, or, you know, you might find a spot off on the side of the road, uh, like this spot right here. This is just some side road I turned down. Um, I've been down here once before and I know there's a trail here. Um, and if you follow the trail, uh, it goes up to a bunch of pine. Now I'm, I'm just gonna set up right here uh, for this video. Uh, I probably would set up right here as well if I was riding all day and I got here, uh, you know, closer to dusk. If you're on the road and, uh, you know, you, you got some idea in your head of where you want to stay, um, where you want to set up, and, you know, you ride all day to get there and for some reason you can't, uh, you know, for whatever reason, um, don't waste your time because you got to get set up before nightfall, right? And uh, yeah, you want to be able to pass out and get a good night's sleep for the next day so just find somewhere else there's all sorts of spots it's not like it's a big deal a lot of people have an idea in their head of what they want to do when they go camping if you're the type of person that thinks you want to uh, you know get your tent set up and have a little campfire and eat a can of stew or whatever um, just keep in mind how much is actually involved in all of that uh, you know just to eat a can of stew for example I'm just picking stew because it's uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's all pre-made meal in a can. Um, you know, you're not really supposed to cook in a can, so you kind of need something to cook it in. You probably need a camping stove. Uh, you're going to need some cutlery. You're going to need something to open the can. Uh, I say, you know, you're riding your bike. You're on the road. Uh, you're never really any more than, I'm going to say, 100 kilometers from a gas station, in, even in the most remote areas ever. So if... Uh, you know if you can let go of that let go of your idea of, of what it is that you think camping is going to be um and just you know find a place to stay that's what this video is about um so what i've done is uh i've set up the bike uh as you can see and i use clear bags uh for most of it just to show you uh what's really involved and sorry there we go now, uh, first thing is my bike has uh, two modifications from, you know, regular stock bike that make this easy to do. Uh, the first mod that I had done at the dealership, or sorry, I ordered with the bike and then I threw it on later, is I have the luggage rack. And the luggage rack's very small, um, but it is big enough to hold all sorts of stuff, as I'll show you. Um, and also, I have the mini ape hanger handlebars. Uh, which makes this a little bit easier to do, uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it on your bike at, at home if you have straight bars or beach bars, whatever. Um, so first of all, I have a very small tent uh, that was also purchased uh, sort of for the purpose of taking on the bike. Um, and then secondly, uh, you're going to want a sleeping bag and you're going to want a pillow. Now a pillow uh, is kind of a convenience. Uh, it's the type of thing you throw in your car if you're gonna go camping you know you can bring your pillow pad your whole life it's comfortable you know you're gonna sleep well on it and uh, people driving by here waving at me <laughs> um, but if you're doing this uh, your best bet really is just bring a pillow case that's it so I threw the pillow case into my sleeping bag and then I rolled it up uh, you know Boy Scout style the proper way where you fold it in half widthwise 
roll it up, you end up with this big, you know, thick patch, whatever. And then I just used some ratchet straps and I made sure that it wasn't uh, going anywhere around my cables or anything like that on my handlebars. And I strapped it to my handlebars. Now, if you don't have the room to do that, no problem. All you do is don't fold your sleeping bag uh, the proper way, uh, width-wise once, so that you end up with a big fat, uh, you know, roll like that. And you just don't fold it, um, put it together, and then just roll it up the way it is. So you end up with a long, skinny, uh, you know, looks like a rolled up carpet. And then that should be skinny enough. You can get that onto any other type of handlebars as well. Um, I had to take my front fairing off. So as you can see, yeah, it's gone. It's a quick release, um, so no big deal. And then um, I put together my stuff. So the stuff you want to put together is, and this is where you got to really keep in mind what it is that you want to accomplish. But um, you know, you got your old man pills. So I got those. Um, you got you know a toothbrush, uh, toothpaste. You know all the stuff that uh, you know you can buy it on the road. But there's not really any reason to buy it uh, because you're just going to bring it home and you're already going to have that there. Um, now, on the other hand, if you're trying to save uh, space, which you are, um, don't bring anything that you, A, might not even need, uh, you know, it, it, with the exception of like, you know, a tool or something that's going to save your life, whatever. Um, but don't bring a whole bunch of crap that you don't need with you. And... Um, keep in mind that you are on the side of the road wherever you're going even if you know you're camping in a park somewhere uh, and you pay for a camping spot to stay the night whatever you're going to do um, just keep in mind i mean you're always close to civilization when you're on the road i've been all across canada myself and uh, the most remote locations ever are still you know within an hour's ride of a gas station or something and i mean that's the most remote location ever so if you have some sort of emergency need or whatever you uh you know you can always find it anyway um and then last but not least and i'm going to get into this later i brought a roll of toilet paper so uh the reason for that is because uh <laughs> even though you're on the road and there's all sorts of places uh to <laughs> um you want to keep in mind that sometimes if you're if you're staying somewhere and you're all set up uh, you can't necessarily just do that anywhere. You probably only need one change of clothes um, because there's laundry mats all over the place. If you're doing a really long haul and uh, you're going to be staying uh, everywhere for a week and trying to make it across the country, uh, you can do it. Just, you know, realize that you're going to have to stop a few times and uh, wash your clothes in a laundromat. Do it, you know, at night or, or in the middle of the day, take a break and... Uh, just get your get your stuff set up so that you're not using up uh, all your free space on your bike. Um, the other thing is is today it's a little cool. It's not it's not cold by any means, uh, but on the bike you know it's a lot colder when you're riding on the highway, whatever. So I like to dress really warm. I'm I'm wearing a, a t-shirt and a sweater, um, and I got this leather jacket. This is sort of my riding jacket. It's just a you know an old winter leather jacket, um, and usually it's not too hot. For me to wear it um but i have enough room available on the back of the bike that and I've, I've done this quite a few times in the past if it gets too hot if i wake up tomorrow and it's 35 degrees or something and i can't wear all this stuff i still got the room to put it down uh on here and strap it down over everything and i can put my sweater on there too you can just ride in a t-shirt whatever you got to do um but yeah when you're picking out your stuff just keep in mind what's the minimum that you can bring. You can definitely get it down to an amount that will fit on your bike, especially if you're making use of your handlebars. So <clears throat> to set up, uh, first off, uh, there's some real simple rules for setting up. Number one, you definitely want to sleep beside your bike. So don't set up, uh, you know, where you got to park your bike in a parking lot and then you're going to walk 100 feet away or 200 feet away set up so that uh, you can just easily get on your bike and leave if you have to for whatever reason you get a phone call uh, you know the, the tornado comes in whatever um, and also you know you don't want your bike getting stolen well it's gone there's no reason for you not to sleep next to it when you pick out your spot you want to pick out a spot that's kind of raised um, because for all you know you might wake up in the morning and there's a torrential 
downpour and you don't want to find out that you set up in a puddle so try and find some raised ground um, you want to try and find some soft ground uh, so ground with uh, pine needles really is uh, my preference I like pine needles because uh, you know it's just a personal thing um, but they don't attract rodents and stuff they tend to have less ticks um, you know if that's something that you're worried about Lyme disease is it's no joke uh, but you know it's rare as well but you set up in a big pile of dirty leaves with mice running around everywhere you are likely to get it so um, that's one consideration when you get your bike to where you want to go and set it up you want to set your bike up so that it's leaning away from you you're going to be sleeping next to it but don't have it leaning over your tent um, or where anywhere you're going to be and also point it uh, so that you can leave easily now in this spot it's a spin around here you can see it's a big huge lot uh, at the beginning of a trail and it's right on the side of the road so it doesn't really matter how I park the bike here um, but if you're going to ride up a trail uh, and be be up there somewhere set up sometimes uh, you know you ride in and you can park the bike set all your stuff up and then when you go to leave you realize I got to turn this damn thing around it might be you know a seven point turn um, you could be muscling it around you don't want to be dropping it in the morning and everything you want to get back on the road and start going if you're staying somewhere and you're gonna be uh, drinking uh, it could be more than one of you you might be by yourself I don't know uh, or shooting heroin smoking pot uh, hoop and blow whatever you do with bath salts whatever you want to do if you're doing that uh, do yourself a favor take the key out of your bike and hide it somewhere uh, that only you can find it hide it somewhere where somebody can't find it if they're looking all over the place okay because uh, you're just doing yourself a favor um, the way DUI laws work if you're in control of a motor vehicle and it's right there with you which it will be um, you can be charged uh, for being intoxicated and if somebody wants to hassle you uh, um, hide the key so just a few notes to add, uh, make sure that you set your tent up at least once before you get out on the road. Not only so you know how to set it up and that you have all the pieces for it. Um, so you want, man, want to make sure that you have your fly and everything. Um, but as well, uh, just so that you know, it will fit back into the original bag. So this tent's called the Rio Rand. Uh, it's known for being extra small, extra compact. It's light. Uh, if you have to carry it somewhere for whatever reason um, and also when you set up uh, as i said you want to be on raised ground so it's hard to tell in the video in fact it's even hard to tell when you're here um, but this is actually raised ground so where this tent's going if you go just back here a little bit the foliage kind of covers it up but there's a ditch right behind it um, that goes down it drops about three feet and there's got a bunch of grass and, and sticks and stuff growing out of it um, but if it were to rain, it would definitely be dry right here where it's going. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Okay, so I got my tent uh, partially set up. I don't have the fly on, um, but just word to the wise. I'm, I'm just showing you here the general setup of, you know, this is what I would do if I was traveling somewhere. Now, I'm close to civilization uh, where I am. I'm right on the edge of a big roadway. If I wanted to, I could go up this trail like a kilometer and be totally hidden. Um, personally, I prefer to be close to people um, for all sorts of reasons. If uh, there's some sort of emergency in the middle of the night, you got a medical problem or who knows what the hell, um, you get a phone call and you got to get out of there. Uh, there's a good chance, you know, somebody might be going by if you're near the side of the road. Um, or, you know, you can get help if you need it. It's also not hard to explain to people where you are if you need to call someone and tell them where you are, whatever. Uh, maybe you can find a spot next to a lake or a river. Uh, go ahead and do do that. Do whatever you're comfortable with. It depends what you're looking for. You know, if you're going to hang out for a full day, make sure it's awesome and you're comfortable. If you're just doing this, you know, to get a rest in so you can leave again in the morning, then I say close to civilization's best. I'm right in front of the sign. Anybody walking this trail is going to see me. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you're in there, passed out, they'll leave you alone. So uh, as far as the tent goes, um, I never trust the weather forecast for anything. If I'm going to be staying somewhere for a while, um, like I mean overnight, not for one hour, uh, I would definitely put that fly on. Uh, it can be a hot, sunny, beautiful day like it is today. And at one o'clock in the morning when it's pitch black out, there could be a massive rainstorm. You don't want to be caught in it and you can't trust the weather forecast. Uh, so make sure your fly is on. Um, as far as the pillowcase goes, I always just stuff it with my clothes. So you're going to have a change of clothes more than likely 
Um, but I also got that big leather jacket. I got the sweater I'm wearing. I'm probably not going to be sleeping in it. Um, maybe I will, who knows. Um, but if I need anything else, there's all sorts of foliage around here. Um, you know, make sure that you recognize at least what it is. It's not poisonous. But you can, uh, you can grab some stuff and stuff your pillowcase uh, to sleep. Now, the black tape also comes in handy for that. If you're grabbing stuff from outside on the ground, you don't want to fall asleep and find out that bugs are crawling all over your face from the stuff you picked up. Uh, so use the black tape. You can tape shut your pillowcase. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. This is the basic setup. That fly is going to go on. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm staying here for any more than an hour or two, that sleeping bag would be inside. You get the idea. Everything's going to fit in there, and uh, I'm close to the road. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like it and uh, share it on YouTube or wherever.